Welcome back my fellow radiation nerds. Today we're taking a closer look at the radioactivity of a mineral that is commonly used in jewelry, the blue apatite. If you enjoy this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming uploads. Thanks, and now back to the video. The mineral apatite was first documented by a German geologist, Abraham Gottlob Werner, in 1786. He named it after a Greek word, apatau, which means to deceive, as it is easy to mistake apatite for other similar looking minerals. Blue apatite is part of the apatite mineral family, and some of the most common colors for apatite minerals are blue, brown, green, and colorless, with their color being determined by the slight variations in the chemical formula. Blue apatite minerals are pretty common around the world, and they are primarily mined in countries like Brazil, Mexico, Pakistan, and Madagascar. Sometimes they can contain impurities and have traces of radioactive elements, which can result in them being slightly radioactive. The primary use of apatite is as a source of phosphate in the production of fertilizers. This can potentially lead to increased amount of norm in the product, however I never was able to detect anything other than potassium-40. Thanks to its bright and vibrant colors, apatite is also used in jewelry, where it can be found on bracelets or necklaces. However, its relatively low hardness makes it not the most durable stone for everyday use. Blue apatite is also used in alternative medicine, particularly in lithotherapy, where it is used to enhance mental clarity, support emotional healing and spiritual growth. This being said, there is absolutely no evidence that would actually support any of these claims. At the moment, I have three samples of blue apatite, two of which I got during a local mineral show that I attended. To be honest, I wasn't looking for apatite minerals, but when my Geige counter started clicking, it really quickly caught my attention, and I had to get a few samples. The first one, and probably my favorite one, is a raw chunk of blue apatite. It has the highest activity of the three samples, and it reads about 1100 counts per minute on my SC International Radiation Alert Ranger, and the gamma dose rate is just over 1 microsievert an hour when measured with my RACID. The second sample is a polish rounded piece, and I really enjoy its semi-transparent and vibrant colors. At 1 cm distance I'm getting about 500 counts per minute on my Ranger, and 0.4 microsievert an hour with my RACID. Lastly, I recently bought two pieces of blue appetite discs that are 1 inch in diameter. They make for a pretty neat calibration source when traveling, but as mentioned before, appetite is pretty brittle and it can break rather easily, so I'm not sure how long they will last. In order to get higher activity, I connected the two pieces using double-sided tape. And now I'm getting about 300 counts per minute on my Ranger, and the dose rate increased by 0.12 microsieverts an hour when measured with my RACID. In the chemical formula, there are no radioactive isotopes present, and I initially thought that these minerals will contain some traces of uranium. However, I wanted to be sure, so I conducted a gamma spectroscopy of my samples, and to my positive surprise, these minerals did not contain uranium, but thorium, making them my second thorium minerals in my collection. Exploring the geology and the radioactivity of my blue apatite minerals was a lot of fun. I found it particularly interesting that I initially thought that these minerals would contain uranium, but after conducting gamma spectroscopy, I learned that they actually contain thorium. I want to hear from you. Do you have any radioactive blue apatite minerals in your collection? What other radioactive minerals should I cover in the future videos? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If yes, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming uploads. Also feel free to check out my Patreon page where you can support the channel financially and get additional exclusive content. And remember, stay active.